in my last video, I I mentioned well one before that I I mentioned how I was having a, a tough time. The response from you lot has been just incredible, and I just want to just want to say thank you. I can't, I cannot explain just how much that meant to me. Thank you so much, Stefano. Amazing message you sent me. Thank you so much, and a few others. I'm not going to name you all, but just wow. Thank you. Anyway, moving along. Um, I've been wanting to look at this. It was released a little while ago now. And that is Ghost BSD. And this is the one that was released about two weeks ago. Maybe a bit more. Um, so we're going to have a look at that. Right, so I'm going to boot straight into the ISO and just have a, a look at it and, and we'll install it and just see how it goes. So I'm at the boot menu. This is boot in, in UEFI mode. Let's get on with it. So let's do number one. Guessing people are waking up. Because it's only 11 o'clock in the morning. It's hard to be too hard on them. She's going to work. Okay. So, where was I? Oh yeah, so Ghost BSD is booted up. Let's install it. Right, English UK, if you don't mind. Here we go. Got all these keyboards. I've got a Dell keyboard here. I wonder if it's on here. I don't actually know which keyboard it is. KB1421. 1421. I'm guessing that's not actually there. Nah. Either way, who cares? Right, next. <laughs> Europe. Not part of Europe, but in Europe. London. Full disk configuration. Yep, yep, yep. Now that's interesting. Only ZFS. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So full disk. ADA zero, we'll keep the Z root as its name, single disc, false ZFS 4K block size. Why ain't it letting me do next? Interesting. Okay. Set up a user. I know it's weak. Leave me alone. Right, let's see how long that takes to, to actually install. Oh no, no coffee. <laughs> Damn. Right, zipping along, which is good. Thank you for choosing Ghost BSB. <laughs> Thank you for choosing Ghost BSD. You're welcome. 75%-ish. Yeah, so this was released so when was it released? Yeah, Eric released this on the 13th of the 2nd. 13th of February. All right, so four weeks ago, not two weeks. Bye-bye. Let's restart. Pull out that USB. That's not needed. There we go. UAC. See what we got. Didn't ask me what host name I wanted. Not that that matters. So let's see what we've got then. So standard desktop background. Let's have a look, see what else they got. Just a few there. What's that? <laughs> That's pleasant. 
I like that. I'm assuming these are standard with, uh, what is this, XFCE? Mate. Okay. I'm assuming these are the standard ones. Theme. What are we on? Yeah, that's better. Right. What else we got? So, accessories. Graphics. In the web. Nothing in the office, really. System tools. Right, so. Preferences. Hardware. Okay. Software station. Let's have a look and see what packages are available. And as far as I'm aware, what GhostBSD does is maintains their own set of packages, which are based on FreeBSD's ones, because this is essentially FreeBSD <laughs> underneath. Packages available, zero. Really? All right, what's going on? Whoosh. That's a lot of updates already. I like that. It's going to install, uh, going to create a, a new BE for it as well. That's that's good. I like that. Let's see if you find anything on the Windows network. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll let it do its updates. Compress. Why would you compress that? I do have a server. I'm going to try mount into it. There. Yeah. yeah. Can't remember what um, what IP address it is. Uh, I think it's fourteen. Pretty sure it's fourteen. It is fourteen. A share name is share. IP in cam PC. That worked. That's good. That's taken a while. Oh look, it's mounted it on the desktop. Very very good. I like that. So what's the IP address of this machine? Let's find a, a terminal. Fish. 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 Today's fish is trout a la creme. EM0, and we are 165. There it is. <laughs> That's good. You can see it on the network. Let's get the terminal out of the way. Right, so it's upgrading already. Yeah, sure. If that's what you want me to do. Bit of a more on the fly this video. It's not a particularly structured video. <laughs> Just sort of grabbed it and started running. Okay. So let's try that again then. Let's have a look at the software station. Sync in the repository. That'd be good. That's better. If in doubt, do the updates. Alright, so. Alright, so what I want to do then is I want to just install the stuff that I normally would install. So, so let's install Audacity. Yeah. That'll take a, a minute or two. Or less. OBS. 30, 30.1, that's just 30, okay, that doesn't surprise me, it, quite often you find that the open source version released to other platforms is a bit behind, so you'll find that the Windows 1 is always up to date, and everything else sort of takes a few minutes to fill it down, okay, bye then. Okay, uh, so let's go, yeah, what is it? It's um, Caden Live, that's the one. Uh, so a lot of dependencies. See, that's quite often annoying as well, isn't it? With, uh, with open source. The dependency list. And while it's all taken care of in package managers like PKG or Flatpak or whatever it is that you're going to use. Yes, Flatpak is for Linux, not FreeBSD or GhostBSD. <coughs> Excuse me. It's still annoying that you have to jump through all those 
<laughs> those dependency loops it is slightly annoying it is what it is what can you do and here we go it's starting to install okay that's that done and let's do what's the most popular one i, I guess it's libra is it these days yeah it probably is yeah see again depends and this is nothing against bsd uh ghost bsd because this is going to happen on any platform apart from windows you quite often don't see that maybe sometimes with microsoft software you get a you need to install a a um dot net framework but it's very rare that you have any dependencies like that again it's no no diss on ghost bsd or open or free bsd or open bsd or linux it's, it's just it seems to be a thing they don't like to bundle what you need i'm not surprised there are probably multiple reasons for it if you was to bundle everything that you needed into say LibreOffice, that package then gets very big doesn't it you know it is what it is what can you do okay and gimp yeah might as well have that use a manual for gimp why not and again all the dependencies which would have been a lot less if i hadn't have ticked most of those boxes but there we go i mean that's nearly a minimal desktop for somebody like me the only other thing that i would put on there would be chromium and thunderbird probably yeah see there's a, a section there called os what is in that can't find out just yet we will do in a minute well now right okay so these are the packages for building the os i see how you do it now eric that's very clever very clever yeah so i should have my software that i've just installed so there's gnu gimp libra interesting no right except it's there i'm not going to go through versions it really yeah. i'll come to the conclusion that versions don't really matter unless you're looking for a particular feature that's only available in a certain version of that software so i don't really care it's fairly quick to start up sound and video audacity that's all i really care about is you know does it run all right incompatible plugin don't care so there we go made by kde so yeah file system user source and ports okay one day i'm going to try using caden live properly maybe i mean how it likes to do this now Funnily enough, I wouldn't allow it to do that. We'll just go. There we go. Screen capture is there. Or window capture. And it does work. So that's great. Okay. What about window capture? Oh, it does work. So that's really good. <laughs> good. That works perfectly. Remove and close. See, startup applications on open source so much easier to manage than on Windows. Just there, add, remove, edit. You know, and, and then options. That's clever. Yeah, yeah. What I want to know is when is Chromium going to allow you to log in? All right, so obviously installing software is quite simple on this. You just use the software station. Python module to talk to Google Chromecast. Mm. 
See, still can't sign in though. All right, okay. Uh, YouTube. Let's have a quick look. See. Now, obviously, I can sign in here, which I'm not going to do. Gary Techno Beaver. I can hear it. It's coming out of the speakers for that mini PC, which uh, pretty rubbish, if I'm honest. Anywho, seven twenty. All right. 4K. Ooh, stuttery. Again, I, I think that's probably more to do with the hardware than it is the actual browser and OS. Bit of tearing there. Slightly setting up. So, yeah, I like it. It's um, simple. It's not taken long to set up at all. What? From install to now. Plus a drive to take one of the kids to work. An hour. It's not bad. In 20 minutes of that was me in the car. So, yeah, I like it. It's um, refreshing to use something as simple as this compared to a Linux distribution where there's a ton of stuff thrown in. All right, there are distributions that don't do that and they're geared towards certain tasks. But generally, as a rule of thumb, Linux, you get tons of stuff thrown in. This is a GUI on top of FreeBSD and you choose what you want. As I've stated before, that is my preference for how I like my OSs. It's kind of how, and I know I'm sorry, but it's kind of how Windows works. You get a load of bloatware stuff with it, but you don't get any usable software until you start installing it, and, and that's the way I prefer it. Plus compatibility with the devices and software that I want to use, obviously. When FreeBSD catches up in that regard, I'll be very, very happy and will jump straight away. My suggestion, go and try GhostBSD, it's well worth a go. Link will be in the description. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, all of that stuff. Leave a comment down below if you've used GhostBSD and let me know what you think of it. But for now, all done and dusted. See you in the next one. Take care. What was this doing? <laughs>